Mark and Joan have been doing a remarkable thing, which we're going to talk a little bit about and then uh, engage you in uh, discussion, reflection about as well. Uh, in their different realms of activism and citizenship and engagement, uh, though their political perspectives are starkly different, their methods, their ways of seeing problems, their approaches in the way that Annie was, was just describing of asking what's upstream, and asking what the structural roots are of the ills that uh, we aim to, to remedy uh, through our activism, in those senses, they are actually quite remarkably similar. Uh, and Joan has, in uh, recent months, catalyzed and launched an endeavor called Living Room Conversations. We're going to talk a bit more about this. On your tables, uh, there are sheets uh, of information about Living Room Conversations. Uh, but as it sounds like, it is simply this format in which Someone who is either from the left or the right hosts a conversation in their living room with some friends on their own side, but then inviting an equal number of friends or new, new friends from the other side. Actually, can I? Yes. So let, let me just, let me just uh, set that up and say we're going to talk a bit about living room conversations and about how it is that Joan and Mark uh, have uh, begun to model and to practice what it is that they're preaching about creating cross-partisan conversations and practicing the art of listening and engaging as citizens. I'm, I'm really interested in this idea of spending that long in a conversation on these questions, who are you, what are your values, what are your dreams, um, that are, quote, not political, right? They are, they are the deeply personal questions. Um, the goal, of course, of living room conversations is not necessarily, perhaps not even at all, that you come out with consensus or that you come out with agreement or a joint action plan or kumbaya, you know, we, we, we love each other, right? The, the point, if I'm understanding it correctly, is that you simply learn to disagree in a more human, uh, agreeable, uh, civil way. Is that, is that a fair way to put it, uh, Mark? I mean, I think ideally we, we like to find common ground. If we can, that's an extraordinary gem at the end of the trail, and, and it gives us things to go further with in other conversations. But if we don't, the reward is, is just the humanity itself. It's, it's stopping this process of vilifying each other. You know? So we need to be respectful of these cultures within these communities. So th this is something which we hopefully we'll draw out as we hear from some folks around the room. Uh, but th you know, one thing is being mindful of language that can be a landmine. Um, and not, you know, activating that. Uh, but I wonder whether over time, as we engage in these living room conversations, we can actually transcend that and, 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 uh, and say, well, why is it that you actually respond the way you do to social justice uh, as a phrase or to states' rights as a phrase? Uh, and let's unpack that, right? right? Uh, because that, that's the, um, th th that I guess is the 202 level of a living room conversation. The 101 is just in the first place figuring out how to hear each other without it all becoming just the kind of the, the red blindness of rage as, you, <laughs> as you're set off. Incredible, incredible social science research coming out uh, uh, in our times right now. Howard Gardner this morning used the phrase new enlightenment. Uh, and uh, my co-author of Gardens of Democracy, Nick Hanauer, and I, we wrote about this a little bit in that book about we live in an age where people are understanding how phenomena work uh, that are totally upending the more mechanistic views that people used to have. And one of the things that's up at being upended is this idea that I do what I do and it doesn't affect others, right? There's social science now about networks and contagions and how norms are contagious, norms of courtesy or discourtesy, norms of civility or incivility, norms of compassion or hard-heartedness, right, are incredibly contagious. And one of the things, there's a wonderful uh, social scientist uh, at, uh, at Harvard named Nick Christakis. Uh, he and Jim Fowler have done this work that show that one of the greatest determinants of your happiness, or actually a bunch of uh, other metrics, your propensity for obesity, uh, your um, uh, level of civic engagement, uh, is your friend's friend's level of happiness or engagement or food healthiness. Uh, and so it's not even just the people in our immediate circles. It's the people one or two degrees removed there that end up shaping us in ways that we hardly even tangibly recognize. Uh, and I think the way that Mark and Joan described the coming together around these living room conversations is testament to that. The ways in which you all have talked about the people in your circles is testament to that as well. I invite you, and I think we all believe that apart from these lists, these lists branch out just the way that any social network branches out. 
And at that second and third degree are even more powerful opportunities for you to crack open spaces and conversations uh, that allow us to hear each other, to see each other, to recognize each other, to respect each other. Uh, and then from that foundation, we can do all the brawling and the combat of democracy, but we first do that foundation. Please join me in thanking Mark Meckler and Joan Blades for their example. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.